Leah. Welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited. I know I didn't post on Friday. Um, it's because I actually saw Black Panther on Friday, so obviously I couldn't post a video about it if I hadn't seen it yet. Um, but I am super excited to discuss this film and what I thought about it and some cute things you guys might have missed. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so first of all, I just want to say that as a standalone film and as an introduction to a new character, Black Panther was amazing. Marvel has perfected over the last 10 years their standalone films and how they work in new characters into the MCU. They've gotten so much better at it, um, you know, starting off with the developments and, you know, making these worlds seem real and that you want to care about them. So Black Panther did an excellent job. It wasn't dry. Um, it was actually interesting and people were engaged in learning about Black Panther. Um, I do want to say it's really awesome for those of you who don't know the original Black Panther comics. Um, the first one was released in 1966 and it was actually three months before um, the group, the Black Panthers, was made. So I think that that's like a little interesting tidbit because in the beginning of the film we are taken back to 1966 in California where the original Black Panther group was assembled in real life. So I think that that was a really cool touch to add to this film because this is the first um, MCU film to be released where the cast and the main character and the superhero of this film is a um, African male. So I think that it is really cool that they decided to take this back to California. Um, I was really confused in the middle of it when they were like, oh, flash here, flash back, flash here. So, um, so now let's get a little deeper into the story itself. So I think the intro to Marvel movies has kind of lost me a little bit. It almost seems like they don't know where to start their films, so they just kind of like dive right in and hope for the best. I thought that with Thor Ragnarok as well, the beginning of Thor was so strange, you know, when he was in the cave, but it picked up really well and I'm happy with the development in that. Um, the cinematography, as always, Marvel does an amazing job. You could tell, high budget film. Um, I, the special effects and the money shots um, of the film were really cool like um when T'Challa and Killmonger were there was this scene that you could just tell it was meant to be that scene that takes your breath away when they were wrestling each other in their last fight and they fall um and then they zoom out and there's no sound they do that on purpose so that the rest of your senses hyper focus it was a little awkward at at some points because they still had them like grunting and making noises and the rest was completely silent so that was a little funny but those shots in particular are the ones where they pay attention to detail and just the overall feeling of that scene some of the jokes kind of lost me a little bit it almost felt like the um Everybody, like the scriptwriter and everything, were those cliche older people that are like, oh, haha, I've heard the kids saying this, so let me put this in there. Like that one scene where she was like, what are those? I am so sick of that, and I feel like everybody else is too. And it's so funny the way things go viral nowadays that they get dated pretty quickly. And, you know, when they started uh, pre production and scripting this film, it was funny, and now almost a year later, a year and a half later, it's kind of like cringy. And I was like, "Oh, Marvel, what are you doing? You don't need those like jokes, my goodness." Um, another thing I loved, of course, was Stanley popping in and making his appearance as always. I get so excited for those aspects. Um, I want to talk about the scene. Um, in the first challenge with T'Challa, it was really um, amazing. I want to point you out to the fact that it was happening um, when the sun was rising at its highest point, signifying that, you know, a new day is on the horizon. And it was also really weird, I want to talk about real quick, the CGI of all the people standing on the mountain, like on the waterfall. Like, that was creepy. Like, that looked so stupid. It just looked like those wacky waving tube mans like floating around on top of the mountain so I was like what the heck 
Um, I also think it's really cool because um, the, again, when he was being a cha challenge this time by Killmonger, that was in the comics, which is super awesome. That pivotal scene, of course, the sun is setting, signaling the downfall of his empire um, when they have their challenge scene. And he picks him up and tosses him over the waterfall. I thought that was amazing. They did true to the comics with that. That was super awesome. Um, action scenes, Marvel always does a great job. They're super intense. You're holding your breath. And the costume designer, mad props. Like, round of applause to the costume designer. You can tell, and the set designer, but you can tell that they worked together and did their research and their homework on some of the more traditional tribal African um, things that they were doing with the costumes and the set design. I think that a lot of times it went over the general audience's head. For example, on the Elder Council, the man with the disc plate in his mouth, that is um, a representation of his actual culture and his status. And a lot of people, it was very disappointing, but when they first showed him in a shot, people thought that it was meant to be funny and it just went right over their head, and they laughed. But that is one of the reasons why Black Panther is so awesome, because it's exposing a lot of people that have never been exposed to this culture, and I think that they did an amazing job of combining a superhero film, but also something that is real and relatable, and teaching people whether they realize it or not. Also, I did love the reference, um, one to Charlie's sister. I, I don't remember her name. <laughs> is like, oh, you, you brought me another white boy to fix. That is in reference to Bucky. We later see in the end of credit scene. Um, that was so amazing. I loved the appearance of Bucky, and I love that they did that. Of course, they are calling him the White Wolf, I believe, which is another reference to the comics. Um, in the comics, T'Challa, like, the Black Panther actually has, like, an adopted brother, who is like a spy or something like that and they call him the white wolf and he is like the only one in the tribe to be white so i'm not sure where they're gonna take that but you can obviously see um the connection in it and i mean bucky is like a spy or he was so i mean that would work i could see that working um overall i'm really interested i loved at the end they were like yes black panther will be in infinity war um I, I kind of feel like it might take place in Wakanda, you know, the, the final battle, because when we see from the trailer in Infinity War, it kind of looks like the same plane. So, that's very interesting as well. Overall, I think it was a good film. Some things were a little iffy, um, like their humor and where they decided to take a few things, but I also enjoyed how they incorporated staying true to the comics and... Putting out a powerful superhero um, movie in this day and age. And that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I think that I will be doing another video of all the Easter eggs because there are so many. I already mentioned a few. So I'm going to stop myself now because I definitely think that I'm going to do an Easter egg video specifically. Um, I just wanted to get a lot of my thoughts out there. As always, comment down below some of the things that you thought, your first impressions of Black Panther. Give this a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Bye, guys. See you next time.